I've been asked to talk about the ways where the Alfred have been using the Vision Aligner 2 system and how surface guided radiotherapy has enabled us to change our practice. So I'll also talk about the use of SGRT for DRBH and Sabre techniques, techniques sorry, reduction of skin marks to no tattoos, um, no marks at all on our breast patients and any future applications for SGRT <coughs> at the Alfred. Uh, someone said to me yesterday that, we, that I was a long time user, which normally you wouldn't really like to be um, referred to as that, but it is true, I'm a long time user of Align RT. We got it installed in 2009, um, and we also got Gate CT and Advantage Workstation for our 4D CT. So we did some initial testing in 2009 um, and we, with SGRT versus skin marks for various sites. What we found was that it was superior for breast, prone belly board patients and supine, supine pelvis patients. Um, we found that it was equal for torsos um, and abdominal patients. So anyway, we implemented breast, prone belly board and supine pelvis patients. Um, as a lot of you have already heard me talk um, at the workshop bits, we, um, we treat on the CT data um, imported via Don DICOM. We use it for patient positioning. Um, so all our patients that we use Align RT for, which is everything other than the head and necks and the electrons, we set the patient up, we um, adjust the rotation and roll um, physically of the patient. Often we just ask them to move and then we move the couch for the vertical long and lat. We then capture a new reference image on these patients before we leave the room and we monitor throughout the time we leave the room while we do the imaging and um, if we do, so we do before imaging on all our patients so we monitor them for that whole time. One of the really good things about Align IT is it gives you the six degrees of freedom information. Um, and because the RTs reduce this, um, your role in pitches manually, I think it's helped to reduce pitch and rotation and it's, it's certainly helped us not have to repeat our images. So that is a reduce of, uh, reduction of dose and also um, of time. <coughs> so breath hold, deep inspiration breath hold, we implemented that in 2014. Sorry, uh, I've got my sniffing, sorry. Um, you know it's important the patient can take a reproducible deep breath and it's also important to make sure that breath's the same each day. So when we do our DIBH patients, we originally started, we would do a free breathing scan at CT and then we would look and see, do you think we need to do DIBH or not? We found that that wasn't a very consistent way to do it. So what we do now, all left-sided patients have a free breathing scan immediately followed by a breath hold scan. Then the patients um, can go because um, we don't put any marks on our patients, so they, they're then free to go and the consultant has time to decide which is the better plan. Both these body contours are exported into Align RT and the initial positioning is the free breathing surface. We have a 1.4 millimetre tolerance for this. Then we select the breath hold surface. The patient takes a deep breath and the, when the deltas are all within tolerance, um, obviously then the gate function is enabled and treatment can commence. There is one thing to be really careful of with um, when you're doing the gate is that um, imaging is not gated so that it's important to make sure that when you take your um, reference, your, your KV images or whatever that you actually are in the right position. It's actually not gated at this stage. So advantages of Align RT for DOBH, no external markers, so quick to set up. The actual area being treated is actually what we, um, is the region of interest we select. And this six degrees of freedom has helped us um, eliminate back arching, because we can see that. One other thing we've actually found, it's relatively easy to do um, bolus if we need to on our DOBH patients. Um, so, we all know that Sabre, it's very important to be precise and that treatment times are long. Some studies have shown that there's likely to be interfraction motion once the treatment times exceed 30 minutes and other studies have shown that it really doesn't correlate to time at all. So whether it's time 
or just random, it's important to monitor your patients. So we've treated over 300 patients. We started in August 2013. Um, all our patients, all our SABRE patients are treated with a line RT. We, we treat with three RTs. Um, one is uh, um, the driver, one does the imaging, and one is solely responsible for the Align RT. Sorry, what uh, uh, which, uh, we have? Uh, we have uh, TrueBeam and an EX, so the Varian. And you need uh, Well, we did originally because we had, um, by the time you do the cone beam, um, and you know, we, so what, so how? If you just, um, I'll finish. I'll let you know how, how we actually our process. So the patient comes down; um, they have no marks on them. We, for the first day, we set up um, with a line RT, um, confirm our ISIS centre placement. We take KV images, um, and then we do our cone beam. So, and then we look at the cone beam before we treat, um, and then we start delivering our fields. We deliver our fields at. Um, we don't have FFF, so we have to deliver. Um, we deliver the IMITs at 400 um, monitor units per minute. Uh, so this is our problem. Yeah. So we originally started doing our sabers. We didn't have a true beam, but originally we started on um, an EX. <coughs> when we first started treating um, sabers, we decided that we would comb beam every 10 minutes, and um, we wanted to be pretty conservative. Um, we don't use any sort of um, pressure immobilisation. The patients are in a vac bag. Um, but we, what we've found now, because we use the SGRT monitoring co continuously throughout the treatment, we feel comfortable to extend the treatment time, so the time between cone beams, out to 12 minutes, and sometimes slightly more. So we use SGR to correct the pitch and the yaw before imaging. We do capture a new gated reference image um, as soon as any of the couch corrections have been applied and the monitoring's turned on and it can be left on for the entire tr time. So non coplanar sabre fields are really easy to treat with a line RT because all you need to do is actually just put the new floor angle into the drop down menu and without having to pause monitoring um, the system acquire, uh, system um, interpretates the new angle. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so the remainder of my talk is a never, our never ending journey for the process of reducing skin marks on our patients. In the late 1990s we stopped tattooing all our patients when it was noticed at follow up the tattoos were bleeding under the skin. The tattoos were unsightly and visible. They limited the clothing options for patients. We, our professor at the time, Professor Alan Rodgers, was quite adamant that we would stop the practice of tattooing on breast patients. And the Cancer Council of Victoria had also received feedback from patients. They hated these permanent reminders. Um, as we heard from uh, Rachel this morning, um, you know, that midline tattoo she really doesn't like. And one of my colleagues um, said that her midline tattoo was just this constant reminder of her breast treatment. This is an example of a couple of tattoos. The first one's at treatment, and the other one is a tattoo at follow-up. And as you can see, the ink has bled under the skin. So as I said, for 20 years, our breast patients have been treated use, only using skin marks that we draw on each day, and we, we top them up each day. We also record full landmarks for all our patients so that we can set them up if they weren't to have their marks. Um, and with the implementation of SGRT in 2010, we became more confident that the, could, this could deliver a more accurate setup than skin marks on our patients. These are the skin marks that we, um, example of the skin marks that we would use on our patients. So what we found that in 2015, we started implementing a no mark pro, um, policy for our breasts. We started no longer maintaining the cutoffs or the, um, where the beams entered the patient. And we weren't really maintaining any marks at all, really just um, some rotation lines and a small isocenter mark. And so we were confident to go to no lines. One of our problems was in 2016, we, um, we had a massive flood and it took out three of our um, fallen acts 
and they were never to return. Um, the flood was really deep. It was, you know, so it flooded all the electronics, um, all the couches. So we were left with one Linac. So it really did slow process because everything, everyone really just wanted to get their patients treated. So late 2016, we decided, yes, we can we can move to no lines on our breasts, and we we chose the breast patients because we felt that they were the ones that were impacted the most by the marks. You know, we'd we'd heard their um, complaints about the lines that we'd drawn, the fact that they wanted to go away between CT and treatment, that the you know Australia's hot, they couldn't go swimming. Um, we'd we'd sell to these patients, you know, put put some cream on, put some powder on, keep the marks, don't worry if the marks come off, all this sort of confusing information. We'd put tapes on them to help them keep the marks on for the long weekend. And then the tapes would get all manky and stuff like that. So we just thought, okay, the breast patients, they're the ones that we're gonna start with. So we had three cohorts in our study. Um, cohort one was treated without SGRT. Um, cohort two was treated in conjunction with skin marks and SGRT, and the cohort three was SGRT alone. There were 15 patients in each cohort between 15 and 25 fractions. They were left or right sided. There was no nodal irradiation and were not in breath hold. So you can see here, this is the absolute displacement across the three cohorts. Cohort one being, remember, not SGRT, just been just the marks. Cohort two, SGRT and marks, and cohort three, no marks at all. Absolute deplacement, cohort one, 0.39, cohort two, 0.28, and cohort three, 0.27. So we can actually see there is quite a bit of difference between SGRT and not SGRT. But the interesting thing that we found here was no, no lines seem to be more accurate. So, so cohort three, no lines. There is a dot up there, that's a bit of an outlier patient who just wriggled every day we left the room, we noticed she reacted, she was really nervous. So we included in the data, but she, she did have quite a bit of absolute displacement. We think that the, um, the fact that we don't have the lines on the patients has stopped the RTs from doing the little fiddle that they do of moving marks and stuff like that, because there's nothing to, to do that too. It's the only thing we can think of. We are going to um, study some more patients, but it was very, um, was very, very pleasing to see that we thought it was as accurate, but to be more accurate, we were really pleased. And you saw the, the slide before? Okay, so. So in summary, the challenge, next challenge was no marks on anyone's skin. Our problem was we only used SGRT on um, patients who were having more than five fractions. And, we, and it was always thought that this palliative cohort um, and the single fraction patients really could benefit from SGRT because we could help with our pitch and roll and rotation and also stop, um, we could monitor to see whether they were moving when we left the room because we all know that patients do have a little wriggle after you've set them up. Not all patients, but um, so this was a very important step on our quest to go lineless as everyone had to have SGRT. So in June 2017, we began treating um, all our patients with SGRT, including single fractions, except cast and electron patients, and all patients had before imaging. So we're very close to no marks on anyone's skin. On Friday before I left, we submitted to our um, innovations committee to see what we needed to do to get rid of lines. And um, while I was away, um, they said that we really can just progress with a new, um, new form um, of treatment. So I really believe by the end of this year, we won't be putting marks on anyone's skin, which is fabulous. Um, one of the things we, we've found, which is, is the RTs are so engaged with um, the align RT being accurate, they'd stop maintaining the marks anyway. So I've actually had to tell them to can you keep the marks on because there's no way I can do a study to prove that the you know removing the lines is accurate if you're not using the lines in the first place. So um, but the, the, the staff are engaged, the patients love it, 
you know, there's no marks, they don't have to hide these marks from anyone, not, the marks aren't coming off on their clothing. And this isn't just the, the woman, like we have men that swim every morning um, and they don't like the fact that, you know, in their speedos, um, they can see the marks or the tattoos, so, yeah. We have just, um, we have a satellite centre that's two hours from Melbourne and we have just, um, Put, put SGRT in down there and they're now treating DIBH patients, which is great because in the past the patients had to drive two hours up the road um, each day. So some of the things that we might do in the future, I'd really like to start using um, a line RT for electrons to monitor them, um, so that's one of the things. And also whether we start using it for some of our head and necks. We, we currently have exact track. We have a big stereo mask program but we use exact track at the moment, so that's something else that we can, we're can we probably going to look at. One thing I, I didn't mention that in 2012, when I became head of planning, I wanted to get rid of tattoos for everybody. I just didn't see the point of having these, these marks, and um, half the department wanted to keep the marks and half didn't. And I was a little bit lucky that one girl stuck herself twice within um, a month with a needle stick injury, so suddenly it became an occupational health and safety issue. So she, there was no risk to her because it was a, a new um, needle, but that really helped to drive getting rid of tattoos. So since 2012, no patient at the Alfred has had a tattoo. Um, no breast patients since 1998. Um, there's no marks on breast patients' skin, so I think we're really progressing to no marks on anyone pretty soon. Oh. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Um, I'd just really like to thank um, the staff at the Alfred, um, and especially these people named here, because they really have done the majority of the work, and I've just um, had a nice trip to London. So. <laughs>